Let us see the solution of an extensive game. Backward induction is a process of reasoning backwards in time from end of a problem or situation to determine a sequence of optimal action. It proceeds by first considering the last game a decision might be made and choosing what to do in any situation at that time. So backward induction in game theory is an iterative process of reasoning backward in time from end of a problem to solve finite extensive form and sequential games and infer a sequence of optimal actions. In backward induction, the player who is not making the last move puts himself in the shoes of the last mover and see what is the optimal decision for the last mover. And by figuring out, he goes backwards and then he calculates what is his optimal action. At each stage of the game, backward induction determines the optimal strategy of the player who makes the last move in the game. Then the optimal action of the next to last move moving player is determined taking the last player's action as given. This process continues backward until the best action for every point in time has been determined. Effectively, one is determining the Nash equilibrium of each subgame of the original game. So let us see for the entry game. Here the player 2 is the last player and he plays after the history in. So player 2 it is better to select accommodate rather than fight since if he selects accommodate he will get a payoff of 1 if he selects fight he will get a payoff of 0. Since 1 is greater than 0 so for player 2 it is better to select accommodate. Now for the player 1 if he play if the player enters in he knows that he will be getting a payoff of 2 and if he goes out he will get a payoff of 1 because the player 1 knows that if he enters inside then the player 2 will definitely accommodate so he will get a payoff of 1 uh, so he will get a payoff of 2 and if he goes out he will get a payoff of 1 so therefore for player 1 it is better that he enters inside. Therefore, in accommodate is the solution of the entry game. The limitations of backward induction is that if the payoffs are same, then the player cannot determine which action is taken by the player. The second one is that if the game is infinite horizon game, that is if the length of the longest terminal history goes to infinity, he is here also there is no final stage and since there is no final stage how we can go backward that is where to start. Now let us study some terminologies strategy. A player strategy specifies the action the player chooses for every history after which it is his or her turn to move. So a strategy of the player I in an extensive game with perfect information is a function that assigns to each history H after which it is the player's I's turn to move an action in A of AI of H. So for example, for your entry game, the strategy of the player 1 are in and out and for the player 2, the strategies are accommodate and fight. Now if you consider the a game tree which is displayed here, then for the player 1, the strategies are x1 and x2 because he is playing only at one point which is after the empty history. So after empty history 5, the player 1 will be either playing x1 or he will be playing x2. And here you can observe that the player 2 will be playing at two points. One is after the history x1, another is after the history x2. So the player's strategy uh, for the player 2 will have two entries. One first entry will specify the action after the history x1 and the second entry will specify what is the action after the history x2. So since after every history x1 and x2 the player 2 has two choices. So 2 into 2 which is nothing but 4 strategies you are going to get for the player 2 which is nothing but y1 a1 y1 a2 y2 a1 y2 a2. So likewise for the example 3 the strategies of the player 1 will be uh, one will be after the empty history, another point will be after the history x1, y1. So which gives rise to x1, z1, x1, z2, x2, z1, x2, z2. 
and similarly for the prayer 2 the strategies will be 1 will be representing after the history x1 that is the first entry will be referring to the action after the history x1 and the second entry will be referring to the action after the history x2 since at every point he has two actions so 2 into 2 which is 4 strategies for the player to exist which are y1 a1 y y1 a2 y2 a1 y2 a2 let us see what is strategy profile so it is like an action profile it is the collection of different strategies of different player the strategy profile s is equal to s1 s2 sn where s1 is the strategy of the player 1 s2 is the strategy of the player 2 and sn is the strategy of the player n so a strategy profile s will traces a terminal history so a strategy profile which uh, traces a terminal history is called as the outcome of a strategy profile represented by o of s so ui of o of s is the payoff of the ith player to the outcome of a strategy profile so nash equilibria a strategy profile s star is a nash equilibria if for every player i and every strategy si of the player i the terminal history o of s star generated by the strategy s star is at least as good according to the i's preferences as the terminal history o of si comma s of minus i star generated by the strategy profile si s of minus i star in which the player i chooses si while every other player chooses uh, sj star that is ui of o of s star is greater than or equal to ui of o of s i s of minus i star that is if the player i uh, shift from the strategy in the nash equilibria he will going to definite if he shifts to any other uh, strategy then his payoff will definitely going to reduce let us see how to transform an extensive game to strategic game so here the players will be the players in the extensive game the actions of each player are the set of actions uh, or set of strategies in the extensive game and the preferences each player's payoff to each action profile is the payoff to the terminal history generated by that action profile in the extensive game let us see an example how to transfer your entry game to a strategy form here we know that the strategies of the player 1 and player 2 are in and out, accommodate and fight. So those will be the actions in the strategy game. So now the preferences will be, so your uh, uh, strategy profile in accommodate will trace us out to the payoff, uh, to the terminal history in accommodate where the payoff is 2-1. So it is 2-1. And in fight will trace us out to the terminal history in fight. So the payoff is 0-0. Zero, zero. And now for out accommodate and out fight, so it is going to tra uh, trace out to the terminal history out where the payoff is 1 to. So in both the places, the payoff is 1 to. So now if you apply finding the best response, you can see that in accommodate and out fight will be the Nash equilibrium. So let us see how to find the uh, sub game perfect equilibrium. What are the various steps? So let L be the length of the longest terminal history. So here first step is start with the sub game of length 1 find the optimal actions for the players who are in the beginning of that sub game then take the sub game of length 2 and find the optimal actions for the players who are in the beginning of that game so repeat this process until you reach the beginning of the game or you complete the sub game of length yes yeah. let us see how to find the sub game perfect equilibria of this following game so now as the step says the consider the sub game of length 1 here you have this is one sub game of length 1 and this is also one sub game of length 1. So here this uh, after the history dl this is the sub game which we can uh, see and after the history u you have one more sub game. This is your uh, sub game which occurs after the history u. So if you consider this sub game here the player who is playing at the beginning of this sub game is the player 1. So for player 1 it is better that he takes the action p since 3 is greater than 2 and in this case the player 2 is playing and 4 is greater than uh, 2 so therefore t is better than better action for the player 2. 
Now consider the subgame of length 2. If you see that, then it occurs after the history h equals to d and the player 2 is going to play at this point. So, player 2 action he has to decide between L and R. If uh, L is selected, then he is going to get a payoff of 3. If R is selected, he is going to get a payoff of 2. So, therefore, uh, L is going to be selected by the player 2. So, now you consider the whole game which is the sub game of length 3. Here, uh, history is 5 and the player 1 is going to play. He has to decide between U and D. If U is played, he is going to get a payoff of 1. If D is uh, played, he will get a payoff of 3. So, it is better that he plays D. Therefore, your uh, sub game of equilibrium will be DP, LT. So, DP indicates that the player 1 will be playing the action D initially and the player 2 will be taking the action L after the history D and the player 2 uh, after he plays L the player 1 will take the action P and the player uh, 2 will take the action T if by chance the player 1 will be shifting from the action D to U that is the meaning of this SPE DP comma LT.